hey pals this top doesn't have a button and i would have just really liked a button you know just like that but it is what it is anyway so this is a video i've been kind of putting off thinking about or doing but i had a big fat optician bill optician's bill which is why i'm wearing these glasses i'm still waiting for my usual pair to be ready with my new prescription because i cannot see <laughs> it's really bad because i've been watching the television and i can't fucking see it everyone's a blob can't read the text messages on the screen it hasn't gotten that much worse but it's been apparently it's been two years since i last had my eyes checked and i don't know where that that time went <laughs> but it's fine we sorted that all out now i was really worried it was like to do with my Crohn's or my takayasu is not gonna lie but you know that has been looked at i've had a full eye test scan of the back of the eye and all that shit and we are okay my eyes are fine i just can't see i've just got worse eyesight <laughs> than two years ago so i've got a hefty bill for one pair of glasses lenses to be changed one pair of sunglasses lenses to be changed a month's worth of contacts because now my eyes aren't even the same prescription <laughs> one is worse than the other so i have to buy more contacts <laughs> Um, and the actual optician's appointment. Um, and it, it wasn't as bad as it has been sometimes. My mum spent like a ridiculous amount of money on some glasses that were like bifocal, very focal lenses and they don't work. So at least we don't have that but it was a lot of money and i i've sold a lot of things i didn't have much left to sell um but i knew in the back of my mind i was like okay i do have my skinny clothes which really i know i'm never going to fit into because actually Fun fact, I never fit into them anyway, except for maybe like one thing. But pretty much everything in this bag, there's not a lot of stuff, but everything in this bag, I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever worn because I've never fit them. So I either bought them too big and I maybe was that size once, but I've never worn them because I've never been small enough. Um. So I wanted to kind of go through my skinny clothes in a video and kind of talk about why it's been so hard to let them go. Because <laughs> there's definitely been a lot of things I have let go where I've been like, yeah, that doesn't fit anymore. Never mind. It's fine. But like, um, there's something about these pieces that kind of a lot of them have some kind of emotional... <laughs> attachment and it's like stop <laughs> please stop so i'm just gonna get on i'm just gonna get on with it let's start with this very interesting pair of shorts from top shop okay so there's this very interesting pair of shorts <laughs> um you see, I had a very peculiar taste in clothing. <laughs> As a teenager, I was an emo, and then a uh, late teenager, I was like very into grunge, 90s grunge kind of clothes. So I don't know what this fits into, but um, these say they're a size 14, which means they're a size 12, <laughs> because it's top shop from like a decade ago. Um, I love green. I still really like this material. Um, I think it's very, like, cool. I think that's why it's been hard to get rid of, because they're, like, a piece of clothing that I actually like the look of. 
Um, so these have literally never been worn. <laughs> and I think at one point I was a size 12. When? <laughs> at least 10 years ago. I don't think I've been a size 12 for 10 years. But like, I think I bought this in my grunge stage. And I, I don't know, I think I've always had this thought in my mind that one day I'll fit them. One day. Jokes on you, sis. Fuck. So those are these have been really hard to let go of, but I have finally come to the decision time to go. Because <laughs> as well, they don't suit what I would wear now anyway. Um so it's time to go. Bye. Um I have another pair of shorts here as well. And they are like a faux leather. I think they're boohoo. No? H&M? Yeah, H&M. And they're a size 12, which means a 10 because it's H&M 10 years ago. I'm pretty sure either this pair or the last pair of shorts, I ordered the size up, but they didn't send me the right size. Which is always helpful. Thank you very much. So again, I think this was in my grunge stage of life. I wore, like constantly wore short shorts with either some kind of fishnets or like ripped tights and shit like that. And I had these blue Doc Martins that I used to wear all the time and I got people to sign them at gigs and shit. Um, so yeah, another pair that has just never been worn because they're definitely the wrong size. <laughs> And they have no give. <laughs> they really have no give. Um, and this this pair has been harder to let go of. Even though they're a smaller size than the last pair. These are, like, I don't know. I would wear these. And, like, I find shorts really hard to find in a style I like nowadays. They just always have... They have a really weird cut around the leg at the moment. That I don't like. Um... But they just sort of stick out and I think it doesn't help that I've got quite a wide waist and then like skinny legs because <laughs> they just stick out even more and I feel like I'm wearing like a skirt with a crotch and it just I don't like it but by time to go I have this skirt next which I used to wear a lot I think after college it says it's like a size medium so I think it might be like a 14 and it was a really pretty skirt, like kind of skater skirt style. Are those pleats? I don't know, I can't, well, that, I don't wear skirts anymore, so I don't know what to say. Um, I think I bought this second hand, like I've, I've shopped second hand my whole life. And I just loved this skirt and I remember wearing it a lot um, in the period after college where I was sort of dabbling into more femme clothes. I'm not sure whether it's because I wanted to be femme, felt femme, was femme, or whether I just felt like I had to be, you know? Patriarchy. And this is, because uh, even feeling it, it feels really nice. And I know this was something I wore for a long time that fit me, but now does not. <laughs> and has not for a long time. But I feel like the clothes that I did, I did wear for a period of time are almost harder to get rid of because I remember wearing them and remember how they made me feel at the time. So like, I think that's why this has been hard to get rid of. And like, as a non-binary person, I worry that maybe one day I wish I hadn't thrown some of these clothes out, like the femme clothes out, because I remember wearing them, I remember lo loving them and stuff like that, but I feel deeply uncomfortable <laughs> at the thought of wearing dresses or skirts. And that's where I can't figure out if it, if that's just a body thing, like a, I feel uncomfortable in my body, so I feel uncomfortable in these femme clothes, or a gender thing of like, I just don't, don't do skirts and dresses no more because I don't, I know I don't have to, you know. <laughs> like I've kind of worked out a style where I feel comfortable, literally, but also emotionally. So like, that's why some of these like, very particular femme items have been really hard to let go of because I worry it's a mistake but it's not a mistake I can buy a new one if I really need it but I don't think I will and if I will it's a while away that's a long way down the line so 
thank you for your service i have this like it's it's kind of a, like a granny top but i think it's cool and i think it could be worn in a really cool way and i used to wear this quite a lot as well i think did i fit this i think i did where's the size there is no size on it but basically this is it it's like it's like a granny top but it's pretty see-through see if i can show mm. Yeah, you can kind of see how see-through it is. This is something that nowadays you would wear with like a bralette or something underneath and it really, it would look really cool. I think this is maybe a size 14. I have big shoulders and <laughs> big boobs <laughs> and like broad, broad everything up here. Up here is broad one of the reasons why for many years I thought I would have made a better man and then I just realized the binary is just not for me I think I remember wearing this a lot I thought it was cool these bastards are sharp that's the one thing I hated about this top though was they're fucking sharp and I had sort of like another version of this that I that was bigger which does fit me I do not like it <laughs> so I don't know if I'd even like this top anymore you know if i could you know that's the other thing if i could wear it would i like it anymore most often no it's just time bye bye um this next one is a dress i don't think i'll be able to actually show you the full thing because it's i mean it's not long but it's a dress this is a size 14 it's actually a primark dress what the fuck this is a cute dress <laughs> this is from primark what i think i bought it second hand though um it's really difficult to show you so it's got it's a buttons down the front dress it has shoulder pads it has like a sewn on sort of tie belt thing and it's kind of like a skater skirt part to it so i wore this a lot after college with a particular ex-boyfriend i had um, and I just remember feeling really pretty and really cute and like looking really good, you know, I felt good in this dress, but would I definitely could not get this on. And it's another thing of like, this is really femme, this is not really something I would choose to wear anymore. So like, even if I could put it on, I wouldn't. And this looks quite a uh, secondhand vintagey style. Um, and that was sort of my femme phase was going into like vintagey clothes i wore a lot of things that were my great grandma's and i got in like jumble sales and charity shops that were all like really old granny basically basically i wore old granny clothes with like a slight grunge spin on it, on it and this was the period before i put on a lot of weight because i had finally decided to go into eating disorder recovery by myself so this was like my last my last hurrah of being a skinny bitch when I didn't think I was a skinny bitch and now I look back you was a skinny bitch so like this was the last time I remember feeling pretty you know before dealing with my disordered eating and mental health issues around that and that has not stopped it has been six years yeah like six years it's still hard it's still it's still hard like it's hard to it's hard to put this one into words just because that's it that's it this is the last time i remember feeling pretty and one of the few times i felt that way pre-recovery because you know my eating disorder made me feel fucking ugly and fat you know i didn't and told me fat was a bad thing but this dress was one of the rare times where i did feel good in myself and it's just very hard to put that into more words better words i think that's just kind of it but you know even if I ever did become a size 14 again, RIP, I just don't think I would ever wear this. And I think I'm at that point in my life where it's time to let go of bad things. <laughs> Thank you for your service. I have one final item here, another one that I never got to wear, but this is like, this is a different kind of category of difficult to let go of because I i love these and i would wear them today if they fit me um and they're this really honestly amazing pair of 
next shorts. Like they're clearly kind of old. They're like nicely distressed. They're a UK 12. I measured the waist 30 inches. I have not had a 30 inch waist ever. Ever? I really don't think ever. I just love everything about them. This is exactly what I would wear today. These are the kinds of shorts I wish I could buy right now that fit me. Um, but RIP, I'm fat. It's not in style for like fast fashion. And everything secondhand is too small. <laughs> like these are proper denim. Like they don't, there's no stretch. <laughs> like truly a beautiful pair of shorts. But... <laughs> I'm not going to be a size 12, like ever. I don't think I'll ever fit into something like that. Like my waist is large. It will never be that small. <laughs> like I swear to God, it will never be that small. That's why this pair has been really hard to let go of because it is something that I would wear today if they fit. If they fit me, it's something I would definitely wear. Whereas most of the other stuff is stuff that I wouldn't really wear anymore. So it's kind of easier to let go of it because it's not just that it doesn't fit. I also would not wear it, you know? Whereas this, just do not fit <laughs> like it's easier to let go of things when there are more than one reason why you should let go of them so i'm gonna try not to think about it too much goodbye i think over the years there's a lot that's been happening in my life <laughs> there are a lot of reasons why it's difficult to let go of clothes for for most of my life went up and down in my weights and my size quite a lot like it would change so often because I was just abusing my body so it was hard to let go of smaller clothes because oh what if I become that size again um and I've been pretty consistently the same size or a bit bigger for five years maybe six not five five years like it took a year maybe two years after I decided that I was going to try and recover from my body to sort of like find its equili e <laughs> equilibrium um so I just like I let let myself for like a year or two just eat what I wanted to eat and as much of it as I wanted to eat that's why I put on a lot of weight um and that was really upsetting but it was just something I had to do uh, my mum was buying me clothes that were stretchy and big and she was cutting the size out of the clothes. And then it got to a point where I sort of naturally started to eat differently. And I don't know, I wouldn't say healthier because, like, oh my God, I <laughs> I would say that my eating habits now are probably the healthiest they've ever been. And also just my habits in general like I've stopped smoking I don't really drink you know all that sort of shit except my body is broken and is on fire <laughs> but I kind of lost quite a bit of that weight can't even think how much it was and I went back down to sort of a 14 14 to 16 and then that was it my weight just stayed where it was for a long time and that was sort of something that I you know heavily relied on for mental stability it was just that I stayed there <laughs> And I did, and it was helpful in uni. I pretty much, you know, I kind of always fluctuated kind of five pounds either side of this number. I don't owe you my weight. <laughs> Fuck off. And that was when I kind of felt more like I could dress the way I wanted to dress. And this was where I was meeting more people like myself. I had a very small number of straight friends and then the rest of them were all queer. And it was... You know, great. And it was helpful for my self-esteem. Even though I was drinking a lot at uni. Not a lot compared to some people, but I was still drinking a lot. You know, it didn't really affect my weight. Finishing uni and becoming very sick. You know, first with Crohn's and then now with Takayasu's or like large vessel vasculitis. I think that's what the other thing they call it. Large cell vasculitis, maybe. I don't know doesn't matter steroids kind of being the thing making it hard <laughs> so like my Crohn's made me realize that I basically had to change my eating habits again um and this was when I'd finally started to be comfortable eating things like pizza and ice cream I could not eat those things anymore because my body was on fire and it still is and it still would be if I ate those things and that was really difficult like after all this time and work I put into you know allowing myself to eat certain things and that 
choice then just being taken away from me and that control like eating disorders are about control and I can tell you my life has never been in control that's why I, I still struggle to this day my life has been fucking crazy my body doesn't like work the way everyone tells you it should work and I can't control that but what can I control but what I eat and what I put into my body you know it's very easy to slip back into those kinds of behaviors <laughs> so trying to fight that on a daily basis is very exhausting but also with these things i might dramatically lose weight either because uh you know i come off the steroids and just suddenly my body's like okay we're gonna go we're gonna work now and then just any extra weight f might fall off or if i get sicker unexplained weight loss is like number one for both of my conditions as like a warning of like hey you're not okay so sometimes it's hard to let go of items because oh wow maybe i'll just get sicker at least i'll look cute you know like no that's, that's irrational stop don't do that shut the fuck up for me getting rid of some of th these things as well is like me fighting back this voice that has arisen from the ashes that i thought it had burned in and be like nah fuck you i won't do what you tell me and then there's also like a the so socio-economical words i can't say factor in that we are poor <laughs> we're not we're not we're not poor but like i am poor <laughs> i don't work i can't work my income is very minimal and i've always kind of grown up in a family that has sort of been very frugal because we haven't always had money basically did not grow up with money a lot of my things growing up were second hand you know i never noticed i had a really great family for the most part you know i never felt like i was missing out on things until i got older and started to notice the behaviors and habits and thoughts of my family members like even to this day my grandparents are like oh my god that's so much money you know never mind forget about that and it's like well that's just inflation <laughs> that's just the price of things now you know but that has rubbed off on me a lot too and the idea of like getting rid of clothes whether it's selling them donating them whatever it's difficult because what if what if we need them you know it's still the what if what if i suddenly get skinny and i need need clothes because i'm skinny and it's like well for starter like well, that's probably not gonna happen but also, even if it did happen, there are clothes in the world. Like, clothes don't have to be expensive. I can I can buy more clothes, you know? Like, it's things like that. Very confusing and hard to detach what are my feelings and my thoughts and what are my family's feelings and thoughts and also what's just my mental illness. <laughs> So there we go that was just a little talk about clothes and getting rid of clothes that don't fit anymore i hope that was enlightening you know i don't fucking i don't fucking know leave a like on the video please that'd be great and a comment let me know if you can relate to anything i've said and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this disabled queer person who often likes to talk about books as well sometimes you know not all the time but sometimes um and i'll see you in next week's video bye